Just ahead on the Eyewitness News update, one American is believed hurt and others are dead in a tense hijacking unfolding on the Mediterranean island of Malta. We'll have the latest. Workers paved the way for a Liberian freighter stuck on the shores of Lake Superior. Dave Andrews has the story. State authorities allow deer hunters to take aim at an overpopulation problem at Fort Snelling. Tom Garrison will explain that one. And the Gophers say goodbye to Floyd of Rosedale. We'll have a New Star Network report and all the details on the prep football games. I'm Angela Astor. Join us for the Eyewitness News Update next. We've got turbos. We've got wagons. Style and luxury, too. Price of payments got the car for you. Now get 8.6% financing or $500 cash back on Chrysler LeBaron GTS. And ask your dealer about the discount air conditioning package. Chrysler Famous got the car for you. Chrysler Famous got the car for you. See your Twin Cities Chrysler Plymouth dealer. On the leading edge of medicine, one hospital is world-renowned for the first open-heart surgery. For breakthrough work in cancer and neonatal care for almost daily advances in transplants and other specialty services. And more remarkable, you can go there, even for a sore foot. So call University Hospitals and Clinics at 373-8002. There are a lot of good hospitals, but there is only one, you. So, this is where I learned to be a K-102 disc jockey just like you, huh? Let's see, you play good country music and lots of it, isn't that right? Yeah. But you don't talk much, you hardly say a word, hardly a word, huh? No. Nope. You play FM country, stereo music, good country music, isn't that right? Yeah. But you don't talk much, you surely don't talk much, huh? No. Nope. Gee, how do you do that? I have no idea how you do it. I don't think I'll ever be able to... It's what we don't say that counts. More music, less bull. K-102 FM. Now, the team that covers the Twin Cities and all of Minnesota brings you the latest news tonight. This is the Eyewitness News Update. Good evening, everyone. I'm Angela Storr. Topping the news tonight, the hijacking of an Egypt Air jetliner. U.S. officials confirm reports tonight that four people are dead. A number of Americans are believed to be passengers on that plane that is now in Malta, an island in the Mediterranean Sea. The plane was on its way from Athens to Cairo when the jet was reportedly commandeered by a group known as the Egypt Revolution. Latest word is that 11 of the 120 passengers on board, all women, have been allowed to leave. They include seven Filipinos and four Egyptians. U.S. officials say an undetermined number of Americans are on board that flight. One American was hurt and taken to a local hospital. Among the victims, a hijacker and an Egyptian security guard. No word on the nationality of the other two. The hijacker's demands have not been made public. We will bring you more information on this story as it unfolds. Another remarkable story, this involving two plane crashes in Florida within an hour and a half of each other. Early this morning, a twin-engine plane crashed in a residential area of Boca Raton, killing all five people aboard. Less than two hours later, a single-engine plane crashed only miles away. One person died in that crash. Neither crash hurt anyone on the ground. The saga of the grounded freighter Socrates continued today in Duluth. Salvage crews were again unable to free the 584-foot ship from the shallow waters of Lake Superior, where it ran aground Monday. Dave Andrews reports the rescue efforts will start up again in the morning. About all crews could do today was dredge up sand from around the hull of the big freighter. Failure to repair a ruptured ballast tank meant plans to tow the freighter off its sandy perch had to be postponed this afternoon. The Socrates, which was forced to ground Monday night in a fierce November storm, has already become a legend of sorts in Duluth. Today they had already put up an exhibit of the grounding inside the Marine Museum at the entrance to Duluth Harbor. The ship was blown into the shore by 60 mile an hour winds. It had been anchored about a mile offshore waiting to pick up a load of grain when the storm hit. Late today, Coast Guard aboard the ship radioed in the message that the towing operation would be postponed. Depth around the entire ship and then 
At first light tomorrow, begin a pull. As usual today, the stranded vessel attracted hundreds of onlookers. Some built a bonfire on shore near the ship, fight off the bitterly cold winds that set in this morning. They are all anxious to see if the ship can be rescued. And so this drama will continue for at least one more night as the Socrates remains hostage to the sandy lake bottom. It will be tomorrow morning at the earliest before the tugs try once again to haul the big ship out into the lake where it belongs. For the Eyewitness News Update, I'm Dave Andrews in Duluth. President Reagan today challenged the Soviets to set a timetable for withdrawal from Afghanistan. The comments came during the president's weekly radio address. The president's address centered on the Soviet Union and the Geneva summit talks. Mr. Reagan said he made it very clear in Geneva that the U.S. is committed to development of a Star Wars defense plan. I think plan. it's fair to point out that the Soviets' main aim at Geneva was to force us to drop SDI. I think I can also say that after Geneva, Mr. Gorbachev understands we have no intention of doing so. The president called a so-called peace shield a hopeful vision to protect the world against nuclear attack. An accord giving the Catholic Irish Republic a role in governing Northern Ireland brought more than 50,000 people to the streets today. The Reverend Ian Paisley ripped apart the letter from Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher that sought to calm Protestant fears. Today's rally climaxed a week of outcry following the Anglo-Irish agreement. After more than a month of debate, the Senate has approved a 1985 farm bill. Passage of the measure came after Senate Republican leaders cut a deal with farm state Democrats. The agreement would put income subsidies for corn, rice, and cotton farmers on a downward path through 1989. In a concession to Democrats, the bill would soften the blow of the 1987 and 88 cuts by replacing them with an equal value of government-owned surplus commodities. Senator Rudy Boschwitz says the bill will help Minnesota farmers. While the bill is not perfect in every regard, it's not too bad a bill. Furthermore, we also agreed to pass a farm credit bill within two days after coming back here after the Thanksgiving recess. So if we have a four-year farm program in place, if we also have a credit program helping the farm credit system in place, I think we will have achieved a great deal. The farm measure now goes to a House Senate conference committee. Retired CIA analyst Larry Wu Tai Chin faces charges tonight of spying for China. Chi Chin was arraigned today in Virginia. He is accused of passing top secret information to Chinese officials. And one official says Chin may have been spying over the past 40 years. More than 20 people were arrested in New York today and some 1,500 pounds of cocaine was seized. That much cocaine has a street value of some $800 million. Authorities claim the drug ring was a major supplier for the New York area. Friends and family of Carla Gertzky gathered today to pay their last respects. Funeral services for the 22-year-old Shoreview woman were held today in Roseville. Authorities said Mrs. Gertzky died of stab wounds. Her husband, 24-year-old Jeffrey Gertzky, has been charged with the murder. A church in YZ pitches in to help struggling families from the Iron Range in Minnesota. We'll tell you how they're making the holidays brighter for them. And deer hunters get a shot at some of the deer at Fort Snelling. We'll tell you why when we return. A lot of small businesses are throwing money away on phone systems that will end up here. Some cost too much, some are too complicated to use, and some... What a smaller business needs is a communication system designed specifically for small businesses. And now there is one, and it's called Caroline. And it's from Northwestern Bell. With Caroline, you can put calls on hold, transfer calls, make conference calls, even use your telephones as an intercom. But the real beauty of Caroline is that it works with these, the phones you already have. So chances are it will cost you a lot less. Call Northwestern Bell toll-free about Caroline, the communication system for smaller businesses you can use with the phones you already have. A lot of HMOs have doctors dancing to their tune these days. But not HMO Minnesota. We don't tell doctors how to treat you or how often they can see you. You see, we're dedicated to keeping doctors independent. Because that's the best way to keep you healthy. 
no strings attached. Way to go, Minnesota. Ancient home, Minnesota. In the first of a special two-day deer hunt at Fort Snelling State Park, hunters killed 30 deer today. The DNR-sanctioned hunt is designed to trim what it calls a serious overpopulation problem. Tom Garrison reports. For the second year in a row, the DNR is holding a special hunt to try to trim deer herd numbers. The reason? Game management specialists say the refuge area has about 45 deer per square mile, with vegetation sufficient for only half that number. Proof of the overpopulation, they say, is the number of deer and car collisions. There were just five in 1978, but close to 90 last year. A handful of protesters from a group calling itself MINAC, Minnesota Network for Animal Concerns, called upon the DNR to find another way to trim the overpopulation. The hunt is obviously not working because last year they had a hunt here. The deer population was 42 per square mile. This year the population is exactly the same. They're having another hunt. Don't know what they hope to accomplish except to satisfy the sick perversions of hunters who get their kicks out of killing helpless animals. But hunters and game officials we talked to didn't think much about the protesters' point of view. I think if they've never seen a starving deer, then they don't know what's going on. The mortality rate on relocating deer is very high, often between 40 and 80 percent. So you simply are not doing the deer much of a favor by relocating them. The second option that I believe is being recommended is birth control in some kind of salt block situation. The, the real problem with that is there's no way to control the dose that an individual animal receives. With tests showing many of the tagged deer to have less fat than last year, authorities say to try to feed them through the winter would only create more deer population problems next year. The protesters had left the wildlife refuge by noontime. The Minnesota DNR officials fear that if the deer herd is not reduced enough this year, the problem of too little food for too many deer could be reaching crisis proportions. For the Eyewitness News Update, Tom Garrison reporting. Hundreds of people converged on the St. Paul Civic Center today hoping to find a job. About 50 employers made jobs available to people who are unemployed or underemployed. The job fair moves to Minneapolis tomorrow. If you are looking for work, stop by the Minneapolis Auditorium between 1 and 6 p.m. People in YZ may not have a lot in common with folks who live up on the Iron Range, but this weekend they're both trying to bridge that gap. Reporter Catherine Smith tells us about a craft fair that may make the holidays a little brighter in some Iron Range homes. Well, it used to be that we would do crafts on the side just for something to pass the time, the long winter nights, whatever. But now, with the men being laid off, a lot of the women have turned to uh, doing their crafts and looking for a market for them. That's how Pat Holstrom's life has changed. Her husband works on and off at the Erie Taconite Mine, a mine that's scheduled to close down temporarily in about a week. Pat used to look at her crafting as a hobby, but now it helps to pay the bills. A lot of times we will like to do it just for friends or relatives, but we have to take time to do it, not as just a hobby. But yes, it takes a lot more time now and energy in order to market it, yes. Pat and about 30 other artisans are bringing their work to the Wyzetta Community Church, their sister church. They're selling it this weekend and taking home some added income. More than just an economic boost for some Iron Range families, crafting has become a way to make people feel better about themselves because it gives them something to feel positive about. They don't want to be on, on uh, unemployment. They don't want to be on general assistance. They don't want to be on AFDC. Uh, they are hurting very badly. And so this opportunity really raises people's sense of self-worth. Many of the shoppers here say in the past three years, the quality of goods has gone up. As craftspeople rely more on their art for their income, they're getting more professional about it. The next step, while well, most of these Iron Range artists say they'd love to have a shop right here in the Twin Cities, a permanent place to market their product. So far, that's still only a dream. But as one woman from the range says, we're used to working hard for our dreams, and we're used to getting them, too. I'm Catherine Smith reporting for the Eyewitness News Update. The phrase wind chill lives up to its definition tonight. Karen Balloon will have all the weather details. River Place brightens with the holiday spirit in a special ceremony. And a St. Paul audience enjoys a special performance tonight. These stories coming up on Eyewitness News Update. This is Carvac from Black & Decker's Car Care Series. Plug it in. 
Rev it up. Feel its power. Black & Decker's Carvac starts fast. It's great on the curves. Great on the straightaways. Its 16-foot cord really goes the distance. Watch it corner. Maneuver through tight spots. Carvac handles like a dream and even stops on a dime. It's one car vacuum with great pickup. Carvac, only from Black & Decker. Ideas at work. Come on, baby, let's go to you. When a roll of the other leading brand quits, Scott Tissue keeps rolling to a thousand sheets, so it lasts longer. Roll on. Scott Tissue four pack and one roll. They go a long way to give you more for your money. Roll on and on. It's 2 a.m. Your daughter's not home. You're more than worried because she has a problem with alcohol, or drugs, or both. You've tried everything to get her to stop. Tonight, it would be enough just to know she's all right. But what about tomorrow? When you think there's absolutely nothing more you can do, there's one thing you must do. Get your child professional medical care. Call the Adolescent Care Unit. Nobody cares the way we do. Oh, Christmas tree. The Christmas season officially began tonight at River Place in Minneapolis with the traditional lighting of the Christmas tree. The chorus and a horse-drawn carriage added to the spirit of the affair. Well, it sure seems like winter outside, and we're... What, what? Like you could go Christmas carol, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, it's about a month away yet. Winter is, yeah. that's true. It's uh, rather cold outside. Wind chills have been right around 30 below all night long. And uh, we have a really good chance of getting below zero tonight. So when was the last time the temperatures went below zero in the Twin Cities? And you have four choices, January 20th, February the 15th, March 15th, or April 1st. I'll give you the answer in just a minute. But that very cold air that's sitting up over the upper Midwest right now came in with an Arctic high pressure system, which is over Nebraska tonight. It brought all that cold air in right out of Canada, and it's sitting right over the central part of the country. The lows this morning across the country reflect that high pressure system. The Arctic air plunged right into the southern Rockies. Well, the temperatures were in the 20s below zero in Montana, and that meant some records. In Montana, there were a few records, 20s and 30s below zero in that part of the state. In fact, the below zero temperatures, that very cold Arctic air, filtered all the way into the central Rockies and on into Nebraska. In fact, there were a few below teens temperatures this morning in Nebraska. Well, the highs also reflect that high pressure system. In fact, the temperatures remained below zero in North Dakota, and the temperatures were generally in the teens across eastern Minnesota. Officially, our high temperature was 15 degrees. That after, or that this morning, the temperatures since have been dropping. On the Almanac, we have a low right now of one degree. That should read one because that's the current temperature. And that uh, means for a rather large departure. The departures here are wrong. The departure is actually about 20 below zero. Currently, we have one degree above zero and a dew point of four below. The temperature is wrong right now. The relative humidity is about 62%. The winds have been rather gusty, but they're beginning to die down now. The winds are out of the west at 12 miles an hour, and that right now gives us a wind chill of 25 below. Does it seem like winter has started early? Well, as a matter of fact, According to the calendar, it hasn't, but on this date in 1981, the Twin Cities was hit by an ice storm that covered everything with a one-quarter inch to one-third inch of glaze. And in 1983, a major snowstorm crossed the upper Midwest and left 11.4 inches of snow in the Twin Cities, 21 inches in Duluth. Sixteen of that fell in about a 24-hour period. And by the way, that was one of two major storms that hit the Twin Cities area inside that Thanksgiving week two years ago. Well, we have a little bit of snow in the forecast, and that perhaps late tomorrow afternoon. We'll start out with some sunshine because the high pressure system will still be having an effect on our weather. But then the clouds roll in over the uh, upper Midwest, and that out ahead of a low pressure system, which is once again developing out to the west of us. It'll spread snow across South Dakota. And then perhaps we'll see a few flurries with the clouds we do have. It'll be cold again as the clouds roll in and cut off the heat from the sun. The temperatures will only make it into the teens, about the mid-teens. So the forecast for tonight, we're looking at clear to partly cloudy and cold with an update on the temperatures of 3 below to 8 below zero. Winds will be west to southwest 5 to 15 miles an hour. Tomorrow, increasing clouds continued cool with highs in the mid-teens. And on Sunday night into Monday, 
we'll have the best chance of snow then, the chance of light snow. In fact, don't be surprised if you see a few flurries tomorrow, but the best chance again, Sunday night into Monday. Lows tomorrow night near 10, highs tomorrow in the, or Monday rather, in the mid-20s. Now, the answer to that question, the last time the temperatures went below zero in the Twin Cities was February the 15th, and that's when it was seven below zero in the morning. I was going to guess that. Were you really? It was really? just going to be a lucky guess, It wasn't though. a fair question to ask you because <laughs> you weren't right. here, but I thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> but tonight we bring you some thoughts about Thanksgiving from Leroy Harrison of Richfield. He writes, what do I have to be thankful for this Thanksgiving? Every day of life. On September 25th, I suffered a very severe heart attack. I'm thankful to Dr. Jay Erdahl, who ran with me in a wheelchair from his office across the street to the Coronary Intensive Care Unit at Fairview Southdale Hospital, and for the nurses of this unit who gave so much TLC throughout my stay in the hospital. I am also thankful for a loving, praying wife, as well as many others, both family and friends, who prayed for me. If you would like to share your thoughts on Thanksgiving, please send them in 100 words or less to KSTP-TV News, 3415 University Avenue, St. Paul, 55114. Coming up next in sports, five new champions are crowned at Prep Bowl 4. And the Gophers get that expected bowl bid, but they had a frustrating day in Iowa City. Ed Cairo has it all next. After 10 years, it seems suddenly to be everywhere. The movement against the artificially high price of watches. A revolution that has spread to over 50 million wrists. Armatron. Watches so beautifully made, so incredibly priced, it has quietly become the second largest watch company in America. Armatron. The revolutionary movement in watches. The comforts of home, away from home. Something almost no one but Amtrak can offer. From Minneapolis-St. Paul, Amtrak can take you to over 475 destinations, including Seattle, Chicago, and New York. All aboard America, all aboard Amtrak. Does this feel good? Hey, let me see. Oh, soft and no static cling. How'd you get it that way? Bold 3, thank you. A detergent. My liquid can't do all that. Well, Bold 3 has built-in fabric softener. Boy, I'd love it in liquid. We made it in liquid. Introducing new liquid Bold 3. A stain-fighting detergent and a full-strength fabric softener combined in a unique new liquid formulation. New liquid Bold even cleans gravy stains. Bold 3. You'll love it in liquid. But wait. Mm, my regular detergent never softened. Get a load of this thickness. Bold 3. You'll love it in liquid. And static? Hey, it's under control. Bold 3 detergent plus fabric softener. You'll love it in liquid. As you. I took my biology degree and put it to work in the Peace Corps. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Well, the Hawkeyes certainly had no trouble today assuring their visit to the Rose Bowl. That's right, and they took that pig back, too. Yeah, oh well. <laughs> Old Floyd of Rosedale is uh, back in Iowa in the trophy case, at least for another year. This afternoon in Iowa City, the Hawkeyes reclaimed Floyd by rolling over the Gophers 31-9. How tough an afternoon was it for Minnesota? Let's take a look at Lou Holtz on the sidelines during today's game. He is not happy. It was not all bad news for the Gophers today, though, because they did get that expected Independence Bowl bid. Channel 5's Greg Warmoth was in Iowa City today, and he has the game story. Like expected, today's game was physical. On the Gophers' first possession, Ricky Foggy on the keeper for little yardage. But Ray Hitchcock and number 36 Larry Station go round and round with Hitchcock taking the fall. It was a battle up front and, uh, you know, kind of a kind of a war, if you want to say. There's a lot of, a lot of contact. and. I'm banged up, but I'm sure they are, too. Once the dust settled, Iowa let its offense do the talking. Here, Ronnie Harmon finds the hole, gets into the end zone, and it was 7-0 Hawks early. 
The Gophers looked like they would stay close, though. Iowan Dave Puck ran for 61 yards on the day. This first down set up a field goal, making it 7-3. But from there, it was Iowa making the big plays. Chuck Long, who became the all-time leading passer in Big Ten history today, hits a wide-open Mike Flag in the end zone, and at the half, it was 17-3 Hawkeyes. In the second half, Iowa picked up where they left off. Here, Minnesotan Rick Bayless on the flea flicker. He dives into the end zone, 31-3 Hawkeyes. The Gophers didn't give up, but just couldn't get it together as a team. On the six-yard line, freshman Ed Penn fumbles, giving the Hawks back the ball. However, late in the game, Minnesota did get into the end zone. Rocky Gaylord catches an Allen Holt pass for six, making the final 31-9. With the victory, Iowa wins the Big Ten and will be playing in the Rose Bowl. And as expected, Minnesota will play in the Independence Bowl against Clemson. Uh, you know, you want to look forward to that, but right now it's, it's tough to swallow. We had really made up our mind two weeks ago that we wanted Minnesota. Does this make it a hard sell for you, though, them losing the last two? Not at all. Not, not as far as we're concerned, uh, because uh, they are a class team. Not only is the 31-9 loss tough to take, it is also the Gophers' fourth loss in their last six games. And even though they locked up a bid to the Independence Bowl, they must be wondering if they can find the winning edge in time. In Iowa City, I'm Greg Warmoth, Channel 5, Eyewitness Sports. Today's loss, by the way, leaves the Gophers with a 6-5 and five record, 4-4 four and four in the Big Ten. Their final stop this season is that Independence Bowl on December 21st in Shreveport, Louisiana. Well, other than that number four Iowa win over the Gophers, sixth-ranked Michigan rolled over Ohio State 27-17. Michigan State 41, Wisconsin 7. White had 100, and, uh, Lorenzo White, 223 yards for the Spartans uh, who go to the All-American Bowl. Purdue over Indiana 34-21, Illinois 45, and Northwestern 20. Elsewhere today, number five Oklahoma headed to the Orange Bowl after beating up Nebraska. First quarter, number 88 is Keith Jackson on the reverse. He gets outside, is going to take it 88 yards for the touchdown. That put the Sooners on top to stay, and they cruise to an easy 27-7 win over second-ranked Nebraska. Oklahoma will now face number one Penn State in the Orange Bowl. Other scores from around the country. Number one Penn State, of course, 31-0 over Pittsburgh today. Miami's going to the Cotton Bowl, and they'll face the Southwest Conference champ. They had an easy time over Colorado State today. Iowa State with an upset of Oklahoma State. Southern Cal beat UCLA. It puts UCLA's Rose Bowl hopes on hold. And Brigham Young, 11th rank, beat Utah today by 10. Other scores of interest, Clemson over South Carolina, 24-17. Clemson, of course, plays the Gophers in the Independence Bowl. And Occidental did in Minnesota St. John's, 28-10. Well, prep bowl number four, now history. And we have five new champions this year in high school football. That day-long event ended just a short time ago, of course, with Burnsville beating Apple Valley for the Class AA title. The final, 27-21. The deciding touchdown came in the fourth quarter. Matt Larson hitting Tom Hiley in the end zone for that touchdown. It gave the Braves a 27-17 win, and they hung on for 27-21, rather. Burnsville wins the AA title. The Class A title, meantime, went to New Craig, but they had to come from behind to win it. Fourth quarter, Mora up by three, but watch New Craig's bad bean on the punt return. He's gone 74 yards for the touchdown with just 53 left in the game. That was the difference as New Craig wrapped up the Class A crown with a 16 to 12 win over Mora today. In Class B, Jackson edged Manoman for their first title. The game was tied at 14 in the third quarter, but then Wade Wacker to John Lilleberg for a 28 yard touchdown. That put Jackson ahead to stay. They went on to claim the Class B championship with a 26-20 win over Manoman. Moving on to Class C, where Glendon Felton won the championship this afternoon. Fourth quarter, Tom Maul going to go 30 yards for a touchdown. A great day for Maul. He rushed for a prep bowl record 170 yards and two touchdowns as the Buffaloes rolled over Zombrota. The final 38-14, and at the time, the score set a prep bowl record for most points. But that mark was broken a short time later in the nine-man title game. This is Westbrook's Dan Weiske with the ball. He goes 10 yards for the touchdown, and Weiske finished the day with 123 yards and two TDs. Westbrook went on to a 45-18 win over defending champion Norman County West for the nine-man title. The 63 points scored in the game, of course, a prep bowl record. 
Well, the six-game winless streak is over for the North Stars. Tonight at Met Center, Minnesota finally won a game. They beat Los Angeles 4-2. The Stars got things going early. First period, Willie Platt, nice pass to Keith Acton. He takes it in, and Acton somehow gets the puck through despite being pulled down. That was one of four unanswered goals for the Stars tonight. In the Nets, John Casey got the start, only his second as a pro. He responded by kicking out 25 shots as the Stars beat the Kings 4-2. to two. Other National Hockey League action tonight. Chicago beat St. Louis 7-3. to Toronto doubled up on Detroit and then some. Boston over Philadelphia. Uh, Hartford 8-1 to one over Winnipeg. Washington shut Quebec down. The Rangers handed the same to the Islanders. Montreal by a goal over Calgary. The same for Edmonton over New Jersey. And a pretty good weekend for the Gopher hockey team. Tonight at Mariucci Arena, the Gophers completed a weekend sweep of Illinois-Chicago with a 7-2 win. First period action, game tied at 1, number 7 Paul Broughton, and number 16 Todd Richards for the goal. That put the Gophers on top for good, and as we said, they went on to a 7-2 victory and a sweep of that series. Next week, the Gophers play at Northern Michigan. Well, things didn't go quite so well for the Stalkers on the Strikers on the road tonight. They lost to Cleveland by the score of uh, 9 to 5. The Strikers, however, still lead the MISL East with a 5 and 2 record. The Gopher men's basketball team also on the road tonight. They play Middle Tennessee in Hawaii, and that game begins about midnight our time. Last night, the Gophers opened their season with a 122-106 uh, win over West Virginia State. And Angela, the Vikings are the seven-point favorites to beat New Orleans tomorrow afternoon at the Metrodome. A must-win situation for the Vikings, though. And that game starts at noon. They have what? Four games left after tomorrow? Or they have five games left after tomorrow, and they better win them all. Or four games say, left, yes. It's they better almost win a them all. must win for every yeah. game. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. A big concert at McAllister College tonight. 285 students, faculty, and community members performed a composition written by Henry Brandt. Brandt is a master of spatial music. Brandt places musicians throughout the performing space. Generally, he selects large spaces like the field house where tonight's performance was held. Five conductors, including Brandt, directed the 75-minute concert. The objective is to create a novel sound. I think that music ought to be maximal, just as life is more than one thing happens at a time in ordinary life. And mu music is, ideally, um, is an ideal medium for expressing this because it's a time medium. Brandt has been experimenting with spatial music for 35 years. Karen Falloon here again to give us the latest word in the weather tomorrow. Well, it's going to be cold overnight, I can tell you that. We will be below zero tonight. Temperatures ranging anywhere from three below to eight below. And then tomorrow we'll start out the day with some sunshine, clouds increasing from the west, continued cool. As those clouds roll in, our highs will only make it to the mid-teens. Hmm. How's that? Maybe even a few flurries tomorrow. Well, I'm ready because I bought a nice warm coat today. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thanks for staying up late. Good night. See you tomorrow.